Question 16. Explain what are real-time embedded systems. Answer. Real-time embedded systems are computer systems that monitor, respond or control an external environment. This environment is connected to the computer system through actuators, sensors and other input-output interfaces. Question 17. What do you understand by a microcontroller? Answer. The microcontroller is a self-contained device with peripherals, memory and a processor that can be used as an embedded system. Question 18. Mention the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller. Answer. Microprocessor manages the resource I.O. memory which lies outside of its own architecture. Microcontrollers have I.O. memory etc. inbuilt and specifically designed for controlling applications. Question 19. What is DMA? How does DMA deal with a microcontroller? Answer. Direct memory access is a feature provided by some computer bus architectures which permits data to be sent directly from an external device such as a disk drive to the memory on the computer's motherboard. DMA address deals with such physical addresses. It is an appliance which directly drives the data and address bus during data transfer. So, it is purely a physical address. Question 20. Explain interrupt latency. How can you reduce it? Answer. In computing, interrupt latency is the delayed time when an interrupt is generated to when the cause of the interrupt is serviced. For many operating systems, devices are serviced as soon as the device's interrupt handler is executed. By writing some minor ISR routines, interrupt latency can be reduced and make the system efficient. Question 21. Mention what are buses used for communication in an embedded system? Answer. In an embedded system, following are the buses used for communication. I2C. Used for communication between multiple ICs. CAN. Used in automobiles with centrally controlled network. USB. Used for communication between CPU and devices like mouse, etc. While ISA, EISA, PCI are the standard buses for parallel communication being used in PCs and other network devices. Question 22. List out the various uses of timers in an embedded system. Answer. Timers in embedded system are used in multiple ways. Real-time clock RTC for the computer system initiating an event after the preset time delay. Initiating an event after the comparison of preset times. Calculate the value in timer on any event. Finding the time interval between two events. Time slicing for different tasks. Time division multiplexing. Setting up of various tasks in RTOS. Question 23. What is a watchdog timer? Answer. A watchdog timer is a hardware that automatically initiates a system reset if the main program neglects to service it. It is often used to reset an embedded device that hangs because of a software or hardware malfunction. Question 24. Explain the need for an infinite loop in embedded systems. Answer. Embedded systems need infinite loops for repeatedly processing and monitoring the state of the program for exceptional errors. For instance, issues such as memory outage or divide by zero, etc. that might just happen during the runtime and are being verified. Question 25. List out some of the commonly found errors in embedded systems. Answer. Some of the commonly found errors in embedded systems are damage of memory devices due to static discharges and transient current, address line malfunctioning due to a short circuit, malfunctioning of data lines due to garbage or errors, some memory locations become inaccessible for storage, wrong insertion of memory devices into memory slots, wrong control of signals. Question 26. What is semaphore? What are the types of semaphore? Answer. Semaphore is an abstract data store which is used to control the resource accesses across the different threads of execution or across different processes. There are basically two types of semaphores. Binary semaphore which can take only 0, 1 values used when there is contention for a single resource entity. Counting semaphore which can take incremental values to a certain limit used when a number of resources is limited. Question 27. When should we use the recursion function? Mention what happens when recursion functions are declared in line. Answer. Recursion function should be used when we are aware of the number of recursive calls is not excessive. Inline functions property says whenever it will call, it will copy the full definition of the function. Recursive functions declared as inline creates the burden for the compiler's execution. 
Question 28. Explain whether we can use semaphore or mutex or spin lock in interrupt context in Linux kernel. Answer. Semaphore or mutex can't be used for interrupt contexts in Linux kernel, while spin locks can be safely used for locking in interrupt context. Question 29. What does a firmware engineer do? Answer. Firmware is the programmable content in electronic hardware devices such as remote controls, mobile phones and medical devices that provide directions to the device on how to operate. Firmware engineers create and execute these instructions called algorithms which enable the hardware to function properly.